In a show of solidarity, Singapore's parliament has unanimously passed a motion to condemn the terror attacks and violations of the international law in the ongoing Israel-Hamas war. Over 20 MPs and ministers spoke on the topic in a six-hour session. Both sides of the House agreed that Singapore must keep a united front. They warned against rhetoric that could threaten the island state's religious and racial harmony. Singapore's foreign affairs minister is urging citizens not to fall into the trap of thinking the Israel-Hamas war is about religion. Dr Vivian Balakrishnan says the country must not let the conflict divide its society and affect racial and religious harmony. Geraldine Yap tells us more. Weeks into the Israel-Hamas war, the human cost of the conflict continues to grow. Palestinian authorities say over 9,000 people have died in Gaza and many more injured. During a parliamentary motion on the conflict, Singapore Foreign Affairs Minister Vivian Balakrishnan condemned the Hamas attack on Israel as an act of terrorism. We have to be categorical in rejecting terrorism. Whoever, whenever, wherever, it is perpetrated. Dr. Balakrishnan says Singapore believes all states have the legitimate right to defend themselves, but they must do so in compliance with international laws. He's also urging for affected civilians to receive humanitarian aid immediately. Dr. Balakrishnan says Singapore's position has always been for a negotiated two-state solution, as that's the only viable and durable solution to the conflict. And the country has voted consistently on this at the United Nations since 1967. It is our sincere hope that over time both sides will master the political will. In fact, I should digress. They need the political leadership with the conviction, the courage and the political capital which they are willing to expend in order to make a two-state solution a reality. And if they don't, then they are doomed to repeated cycles of violence. Even as the conflict plays out far away, the minister is warning against allowing it to divide Singaporeans and affect the religious and racial harmony here. It is worth emphasising that the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is not a religious conflict. At its core, the conflict has always been about territory, self-determination, identity, and complicated by intra-Palestinian and intra-Israeli domestic politics. And as I said before, it provides fertile ground for extremists on both sides to misuse religion to further their political aims. And we must not fall into that trap. Dr. Balakrishnan adds that the Israel-Hamas conflict is a stark reminder for Singapore that its national interests are at stake. The ruling PAP then pressed the Opposition Workers' Party to explain why they stopped short of using the term terrorism in their statements to describe Hamas's attack on Israel. Leader of the Opposition, Pritam Singh, was urged to take a clear stand on the conflict and not use ambiguity to score political points. The focus of our statement actually was to emphasise that whether it's Hamas, whether it's Israel, Killing of non-combatants, women, children, by any country or organisation deserves no less than absolute condemnation. I thought that would have made it clear that we were taking a very even-keeled approach to this matter. That on the one hand, uh, the terrorist attacks are not to be condoned. On the other hand, when you have uh, matters such as Israeli settlers uh, evicting Palestinians from their homes in the West Bank, even today, it's happening today. That also ought to be condemned. I, I hope the minister can agree that uh, there has to be an even-handed approach to this. My conclusion from this recent confirmation is that actually you stand four square with us and with the motion and with the government's position. And I want to welcome that 
because the arguments on foreign policy must stop at our shores. And on something as vital as terrorism, we cannot afford to have political parties trying to outflank each other in order to look to fish for votes. So I am grateful for the Workers' Party's confirmation that you stand on this issue, that what happened on that day was a terrorist act, deserves unequivocal condemnation. Later on, Deputy Prime Minister Lawrence Wong chimed in, calling again on the WP to make it stand clear. He also asked Mr Singh if his party would amend its earlier statement, to which Mr Singh agreed. There was ambiguity about that statement. There were questions raised about the worker, Workers' Party's stance on the actions of Hamas. And some might even ask whether the WP had deliberately overlooked this just to appear more sympathetic to the Palestinian cause. So I'm very glad that Mr Singh has stood up and explained the WP's position clearly and has condemned Hamas's acts as acts of terrorism. And perhaps if he is so minded, Mr Singh might update the Workers' Party social media platform to reflect this position so that there is no ambiguity about the matter whatsoever. This is not a trivial matter. This is not just nitpicking at words. It is a key point of principle because national security is at stake. In future, if the, if the government has an inkling of such a concern that there are national security matters or issues which the opposition may not be apprised of, or we may have completely ignored, let us know. And my assurance to the DPM is that we will certainly take those views on board very carefully, uh, because as the Deputy Prime Minister mentioned, at the end of the day, we want a, a Singapore where we have a united population, even though we know that the issue tugs at the heartstrings of people on both sides. So that's my assurance to the DPM. Deputy Prime Minister Lawrence Wong says that even though the Israel-Hamas conflict is happening far from our shores, it could still affect Singapore. And that's because foreign terrorist groups and self-radicalized individuals could exploit the emotive issues and perhaps divide our society. He urges Singaporeans to always be vigilant and not take racial and religious harmony for granted. We fully expect extremist and terrorist groups in the region to use this conflict to rile up sentiments and radicalize more individuals. Since the conflict started, regional internet traffic on extremist sites has already gone up threefold. Because we track these sites, we know the traffic has increased. And we have also observed an uptick in anti-Singapore rhetoric including violent threats against Singapore by regional extremist elements online. So amidst this conflict, it is more urgent than ever that we prepare for all contingencies. Mr Wong says that in October alone, police received eight reports of abuse targeted at Jewish or Muslim communities here. And he says Singapore's security agencies are on heightened alert and have put in place additional security measures as a precaution. He urges Singaporeans to report any suspicious activity to authorities. As the country's painful history has showed how disastrous ethnic and religious strife can be, Mr Wong says that Singaporeans cannot afford to be complacent. All of us as individuals can do our part too. The government will continue to provide safe spaces for such sensitive conversations to take place. But we should do our part to be respectful and constructive in our dialogue and discourse, both online and offline. We should strive to listen to and empathize with one another, especially when we disagree and have different views. And we should not hesitate to call out inflammatory language which seek to turn communities against each other. In this way, we can collectively strengthen the peace and social cohesion that is essential to the Singaporean way of life. The call for social cohesion also echoed by MPs across the House. They stressed the need to condemn the violence by both parties 
especially against women and children. They're also urging Singaporeans to differentiate between facts and subjective views. The motion was tabled by MPs Vikram Nair, Alex Yam and Zulkarnian Abdul Rahim. We must guard against rhetoric which cause divisions in our society. We cannot be pulled into a partisan fight, pitting one against the other. Let's have the conviction of courage to do the right thing. Show empathy for all affected. Let's not allow conflicts overseas to allow to sow discords of disharmony amongst us. Let's remain united with fellow Singaporeans to stand side by side on the side of humanity and compassion. We should not analyse a political issue through religious lenses. For us, it is a humanitarian issue, and both Israel and the Palestinians deserve to live in peace and harmony. Our contribution is a humanitarian one, to advocate and support calls to stop the killing, particularly of civilians and children, and to support the international community in reaching a lasting settlement between Israel and the Palestinians. We agree that any and all violence and kidnapping of innocent civilians is wrong. But while a state has a right to self-defence, this must be tempered by proportionality. Parties must distinguish between combatants and civilians. And many have asked, is the loss of so many innocent non-military personnel proportionate? When will the collective punishment against the Palestinian people end? As a nation, we must advocate for a peaceful resolution to this conflict aligned with our commitment to a negotiated two-state solution consistent with the relevant United Nations Security Council resolutions. Mr. Speaker, this motion holds great relevance to Singapore's public safety and security. It is directly connected to our racial harmony, our duty to prevent potential security threats, and our commitment to voicing the concerns of the general public. Schools and higher education institutions should more actively promote classroom discussions on this topic. This will not only provide young people with a platform to voice their perspectives and express their frustrations with the situation, but also encourage them to respect different viewpoints. Beyond this conflict, we should be worried about different segments of the community receiving their news and how they are able to differentiate between the facts and subjective views. This is important as false information have dire consequences for the unity of our country and how we function as a nation. We urge Singaporeans from all communities to be mindful of what we say and do regarding this issue, especially on online forums. We all have the responsibility to refrain from engaging in inflammatory rhetoric that could threaten the peace and harmony that we enjoy in Singapore. Authorities have rejected five applications to hold events at the Speaker's Corner in October. All these are related to the situation in the Middle East. Police have said public assemblies related to the ongoing conflict will be prohibited as there are real concerns over public safety and security. Such high-tension gatherings have resulted in violence in other countries. The Home Affairs Ministry says applications to use the Speaker's Corner or other places to hold such events will continue to be rejected as long as there's a risk to public safety and security. An MP also asked if there had been an increase in rhetoric or activities by extremist groups in the region, calling on Muslims to fight. In response, the ministry says Singapore will not tolerate anyone calling for violence and that the agencies are watching the situation very closely. Singaporeans, on their part, must stay vigilant. They should report to the authorities any suspicious behaviour or individuals whom they suspect could have been radicalised. Mr. Speaker, our strongest defence is our collective vigilance. The Home Affairs Ministry has warned that the unauthorised public display of foreign national emblems, such as those related to the Israel-Hamas conflict, is an offence. It is aware that apparel and accessories with such emblems are being worn or sold online. 
Our travelers coming through Singapore's checkpoints are advised not to display such articles. Firm action will be taken against those who fail to comply. And this includes denying entry, promoting logos of terrorist or militant groups, including Hamas or its military wing, will also not be condoned. Singaporeans who wish to show support to people affected by this conflict can contribute to fundraising and donation drives by approved organizations. Well, these include the Singapore Red Cross Society and the Ramatan Lili, sorry, Ramatan Lil Alamin Foundation. Singapore schools will continue to emphasize Singapore's multicultural context and the importance of preserving racial and religious harmony. Second Foreign Affairs and Education Minister Maliki Osman says that students will also learn how to discern fake news and misinformation. For students who are trying to understand the ongoing conflict and navigate the multiple perspectives or wish to express their views, schools and IHLs provide a safe environment for them to engage in civil, respectful and balanced discourse and allow different opinions to be voiced and discussed objectively even while they engage in robust and rigorous debate. Students are reminded to be respectful and constructive during these discussions. Dr Maliki also adds that Singapore cannot take its social harmony for granted and must continue to work hard to preserve it. Kami menghargai kedua-dua masyarakat Islam dan Yahudi di sini yang telah bertindak tenang dan mengawal perasaan. Pemimpin-pemimpin agama seperti Mufti dan Ketua Rabai telah meluahkan simpati, memberikan keyakinan dan menyokong antara satu sama lain. Ini mencerminkan bahawa satu modal ini mencerminkan bahawa satu model saling wujud bersama tidak mustahil. Dan sebagai satu masyarakat, kita mesti mengembling usaha, segala usaha yang ada untuk memelihara keharmonian sosial yang telah kita bina di Singapura. Deputy Prime Minister Lawrence Wong has assured Singaporeans that the direct impact of the country's economy from the Israel-Hamas war has been limited. Well, that's due to Singapore's limited trade and investment links with Israel and the Palestinian territories. But Mr Wong, who's also the finance minister, warns that things could change if the conflict should spill over into a regional one in the Middle East. There will certainly be wider implications, especially on oil and food prices. So we must be prepared for more uncertainties ahead and we are updating our drawer plans should the situation take a turn for the worse and we are impacted.